Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you how to implement the structure login using the new SLOG package to improve observability. So, what is a structure login? A structure login is a practice that indicates the implementation of a consistent and predetermined message format for application log entries. This message format is typically represented as a collection of key value pairs. Each one of those log entries is captured and collected by a log aggregation software tool, allowing searching for particular values by filtering on context of a particular key, for example, a concrete error code. Similarly, if multiple applications follow the same message format, their logs could be cross-referenced to gather data around a concrete value or key. Typical keys included in a structured login include things such as date, time, verbosity level, a concrete message explaining the error, and a unique request identifier, just to mention a few. Slog is an experimental package that was the result of a proposal by Jonathan Amsterdam back in October 20th, 2022. This proposal was accepted for Go 1.21. In Slog, we have three principal types. Logger, which provides several methods, such as info, warn, debug, and error, for reporting the events, and those methods also support the context type. Next, each logger is associated with a handler, which is in charge of formatting the third type, record. Record defines the log record, which by default includes time, a level, a message, and finally a set of key value pairs. It's important to call out that keys must be of a string type, and the values may be of any other type. All right, enough talking, let me show you the examples that I prepared for you. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out when you have some time. Let's start with the first example. In this one, I want to be showing you the basics of this new API. I have a few already prepared use cases that I will be showing you by one by one. As usual, we imported this previously, which is the experimental slog package. What I did is already implemented a few lines that I call in the debug and the info methods that allow you to use the debug level and the info level. I want to show you first something which will be that by default this logger uses the log package. So if I let me comment that out and run it without uh, having that. I want to show you if I run this you will notice that it's using it's not using key value pairs but rather what the log package is providing. It does use those right here below but is prefixed by this information that is coming from the log package and in order to confirm that if i update the flags that are going to be applicable to the log package like for example display date log time use utc use microseconds use the long file and things like that if i run this again you will see that now let's save let's see that if i run it again it will be now displaying the whole thing that i indicated with the flags now, this is not something that we want, or maybe we want, it depends on the parser that we're using for collecting these logs. But typically what we're looking for is for key value pairs. In order to apply that directly, let's comment this out, we're going to be enabling this text handler. There are two handlers implemented in the slog package. At the moment, one using JSON and one using a text format. So in order to do this, we just follow this instruction. We initialize the handler, like I told you before, a handler is going to be used as logger uses a handler and that's the logger that we're going to be using for printing out the values we don't have to do anything other than that we clean up the screen and now we have the values that were uh, now are presented in a way now there are key values with the separator and is used the equals character if you notice we have below we have two calls one using debug and one use info by default slog doesn't print out anything below info so info is the default value if we want to change this we will have to enable it by making a change like this let's comment it out the handler that we had before and let's enable the new handler what we are doing here is we are initializing a few options that indicate that the minimum level that we want to print out will be the bug and we associate that with the logger and again we set it as the default so these calls continue working. If we run it again, you will see now two instructions, one for the debug and another one for info right here. 
So this is a way to dynamically set the debug level and the perforosity actually when logging different records. Finally, one thing that I mentioned in the beginning is that the keys must be strings. If you look at the API, for example, if you use info, this API is using a variadic type of any or empty interface or any type back and forth. So we could be defining incorrectly something like what I have here, which is adding using 10 as an int, uh, but it should be a string and the value that we have right here. Now, if we run this, you will notice that it's going to be printing out a key that indicates, hey, this is a bad key. I don't know exactly what to do with it. So I'm just going to be printing out the two values that I have using a bad key. This gets worse because now if I add a new extra something, which will be in this case a key, now these two fields are going to be the key and the, and the value instead. Let me show you. If you notice now we have bad key, which is the wrong key in the first place. And second, we have 10, which is the one that we had above. So it's, it's a little bit interesting the way it works with logs. So it's important to keep that in mind. All the keys must be strings. Anything else could be any, of, any other type. Let me show you the second example. As log introduces a concept called groups that allow you to group specific attributes. And in this case, if we go into the second folder and open the main.go file, you would notice that I have two groups, one indicating uh, an application one and the other one indicating an application two. If we use the default text handle, you will see that the result is going to be printed out depending on the handler itself. So if I do a go run, you will notice that now the app one and ID are using a dot and app two are actually using a dot as well but if you use a different handler for example if you use the json handler let me comment this out and print this it change this enable this back if we run it now it will show a typical javascript uh, and like an object in javascript and similarly with the application too so the whole point of using groups in this case is in cases we have a we need to log different data from different systems and perhaps there is the uh, case where they may be using the same ideas this is a way to separate those and keep them in, in interfering between each one of them let me show you the third example this final example shows you the support of context in the slug package so if we open our main.go file i want to show you something first uh, please let's let's ignore the first line i want to show you what's happening with the slog implementation. We have an info that happens to be receiving a context, which in this case, I'm doing some manipulation with the context. You will see the implementation of that code in a moment. But what I'm doing specifically is I'm going to be using the context value method to pass in a value in the context itself. If you saw my video previously covering context and values, you, you most likely have an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, the important thing is that by default, the slug package doesn't do anything with the context. So if I do, if I go ahead and go run this, you will notice that it's just printing out the types and the fields that we have by default, not the ones that are, were supposed to be in the context. So it's not doing anything with it. But if we go ahead and implement a custom handler that happens to be supporting that implementation, it will be making the use of the context and therefore the values that we set in the context to print out something in the log. So if we run this again, you will notice that now uh, there is a new field called auth token that has this, val this value of some fancy JWT. Now, how does this work? I implemented a custom handler right here. There is a type custom hand JSON handler that happens to be embedding the original slug JSON handler. I take care of the handle function, that is the handle function is the one that is called when we're trying to format the result of the record. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing a typical paradigm that is used in Go when you're trying to assign, assign concrete or constant values to context. In this case, I'm, uh, I'm using this auth from context function that is defined above that happens to be using these two important bits. One will be this context key type and this var uh, auth token context key of the same type type that you find above 
So what is happening here is I'm defining these two functions to get a constant value from a context in order to determine if the value exists or not. So we can set it or can, we can retrieve it, which is the value, the function that is call, called right here below. So this is an, a nice way to not leak the values that you specify and make them constant in such a way that you can use them to in your packages themselves. This is a typical way to define values in context that apply and only to your package or the package that you're using. So when we run this, you will notice that now the context exists because I'm setting it right here. So this is a, a nice way to, to use context in the context of the slug package. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care and stay safe. See ya.